So in today's video, we're going to be talking about all the musical equipment and just general YouTube equipment that I use in my little home studio. So roll credits. <laughs> Hi guys, welcome back to the channel. If you don't know who I am, my name's Nick, NBYT Vlogs. I do vlogs and cover songs and just general chat. So in today's video, we're going to be talking about the equipment and software that I use to do my daily vlogs, my cover songs and everything else. So let's just get into the equipment stage of it. So we'll start off with the musical side of it. As you've probably seen in some of the cover song videos that I've been putting out, you'll see uh, the main bulk of the shield and the microphone. So we'll go into that first. So the bundle set that I ended up getting, oh, this was like about eight or nine years ago now, was from uh, a company called SE Electronics. Um, I've got the, I'm using it now, so you'll probably see some B-roll around about now. It's the SE2000 condenser mic. Uh, the input is an XLR input, so you'll need an XLR cable to run from it. It's not a USB plug-in. Most USB microphones that I have seen, like the Blue Yeti and the Snowball, would probably work just as well, because you can do a lot of things in post-production anyway to make your voice sound that little bit more professional. I have found with this condenser mic that it does pick up really well sometimes a little bit too well because you may have also heard in other vlogs next door's dogs like to bark and this will even pick that up even when they're downstairs and with the shield and everything so again when you use uh post-production software which i'll talk about in a bit you'll be able to sort of cut all that stuff out so it is a really really good mic Again, with the isolation shield, that is from the same company, SE Electronics. I'll leave all the links in the description down below should you want to go and have a little look at them. Um, they are affiliate links, so if you do click on them, muggins here, it gets a nice little purchase. So the isolation shield is really for people that are going to struggle with blocking out background noise, be it from outside or from adjoining rooms in your house. If you live in small areas like flats and apartments, it's also good for that. It's really good for podcasters, so you could set up in a corner of your room with that around it and do, uh, if you was doing a lone podcast, it's brilliant for things like that. Voice acting, again, it just blocks out all of that background noise and it's ideal for mainly people that are going to struggle to get down to a professional studio or have vocal booths set up in their home so it's a really good little bit of kit so this bundle also comes with a pop filter and for those that don't know a pop filter is what you place in front of the microphone for your p's and s's uh, it stops that that hissing sound and the popping sound going into the microphone which is really difficult to sort of flatten out in post-production it sort of takes the the brunt of your the p's and the s's and makes it softer um, you can get cloth ones i prefer the cloth ones you'll probably see it's sort of like a, a diaphragm type thing but the one that i've got is sort of like a metal mesh it doesn't do the job quite as well as um, the cloth ones or the fabric ones so i'll probably be changing that out pretty soon because i'm doing a lot more of the cover songs now and you the more i listen in post-production you really do notice the P's and S's and that pop filter not doing its job properly. So I will uh, look into getting another pop filter and I'll leave that a description if I do find a decent one, again, down below in the kit. So again, in this, uh, I've got the, the old bundle from SE Electronics, which I don't think they do anymore. So this microphone and the isolation shield have all been upgraded. Again, I'll leave the link down below for the new one. I believe it's called the X1S bundle, studio bundle. So you'll get the isolation shield, the condenser microphone, which is a lot better quality and it's a lot more condensed than the one that I've got, uh, a pop filter and a shock mount, which I did not get with uh, the kit that I got. Now a shock mount, what that does is your microphone will cradle in that shock mount. So if you accidentally tap the microphone or hit the mic stand by a mistake or tap the isolation booth what it is is it's a set of springs or sort of like fabric type cables that will absorb the shock of what's going in so then your microphone does not pick up that tapping or banging sound so they're really good you'll probably see a lot of podcasters 
or Twitch streamers, you'll see them with their microphone in a little surround with elastic bands and stuff coming off it. That's the shock mount. So this new upgraded bundle from SE Electronics is the X1S Vocal Bundle. I'll leave the link down below in the little kit link. You can click on that to see all the uh, items and kit and gear that I use for my mu music and my vlogs. That will take you to uh, the Amazon store where you'll be able to pick up this amazing bit of kit if you wanted to get into your singing or go down a uh, podcasting route voiceovers voice acting it's ideal for beginners to get you started and then you can just progress from an air and upgrade your kit as and when you want to now it's all well and good having this kit but what are you going to rest it on so you need to invest in a really good mic stand um i wouldn't go for just the plain pole length adjustable height mic stands because i feel that owning a boom mic stand gives you a lot more flexibility again You've seen me in the uh, cover song videos that I do with the surround and everything is in that straight position. Whereas now what I'm recording is I've got the microphone just above my head here on the boom arm that comes out. So then you're not getting uh, the mic stand in shot and everything. You're picking up decent audio from me. You've got a lot more flexibility in the way that you can position the mic. And yeah, they're, they're next to nothing as well. They're pretty cheap. Again, link in the description down below for you now the mic is only as good as what you plug it into and you're going to need a fairly decent cable again with the snowballs and the blue yeti mics they're usb connectors they go straight in your laptop and then either well whatever software you're using be it garage band or final cut pro or adobe or anything like that should be able to pick up your uh, the mic purely for you plugging it into your uh, laptop. It's a little bit more difficult with this microphone because like I said, it's an XLR connection. Don't ask me what XLR stands for. I'll probably leave it across the bottom somewhere. So yeah, the reason I got an XLR cable is one, obviously, because that's what the connector for the mic is. So I can't use a USB cable. And plus the other end, I go into uh, an interface, which I'll go on to next, but that also needs an XLR connection. Now, I don't know if any one of you have actually been to a professional music studio and see the sort of rigs and sound equipment and engineering part of what the production team use. It can roll into thousands upon thousands of pounds. If you're willing just to just do a home, a cheap home studio, which this video is mainly geared up towards, if you're starting in YouTube or you want to start doing your career in music or anything like that, this video is more geared up for you to get started on a nice cheap budget. So the interface that I use is from a company called Focusrite and this is the standard uh, musical interface that I think they bring out for beginners and starter uppers. Uh, and this is the Scarlett 2i2 studio interface. Since I've bought this interface, they have updated uh, the box. I think it's just look wise. I think pretty much everything that's on the box is again, like for like, switch wise and volume gauge twiddly knob wise. So the 2i2 comes with two inputs, both XLR connectors. Uh, you can then hook this up to your microphones. You can plug in your guitars. You can plug in your keyboard if it's got XLR connectors on that, basses and stuff like that. And you can also mic drum kits up to it. But be aware, it will only connect to two XLR connectors at one time. So you will only have the two inputs coming in. So the power that runs the Scarlett 2i2 is what we call phantom power. So you'll plug one end into the Scarlett box and the other will be from USB into your laptop. And the laptop, the power from the laptop will power your Scarlett 2i2. This is really good because that means you, you can pretty much take it anywhere and you don't need any mains power. So if you wanted to say you're starting up busking, you've got a laptop, you want to record the stuff as well as perform it live, you can plug it all in, get your sound connections and everything right, purely because your laptop is powering the Scarlet. It's great. Also comes with a 3.5 millimeter jack. Yeah, you'll be able to monitor what you're hearing through your headphones as well as while you're uh, performing or doing your voiceovers or your acting. So everything that's going into the interface will come through your headphones so you can hear what you're saying, basically. You can get the volume levels right. You can have reverb and echo on there. And yeah, it just makes it a little bit more, it makes it easier to sort of gauge if you're clipping, which is basically you're going too high when you see your volume meter going into the red. We really don't want that because that sounds horrible. 
So yeah, you can sort of gauge what your end product is gonna sound like when you put it into post and actually release what you're gonna be releasing because you can hear all the different sound levels and the effects that you've got going in, into your headphones and you're like, all oh, right, I can gauge that now and it sounds all right. Now the size of the Scarlett 2i2 is no bigger than an old VHS cassette tape, if not smaller. So for beginners, it doesn't take up any room at all in your home studio. You can perch it on a shelf, you can hide it behind your laptop, you can put it in a drawer if you can manage to figure out how you're gonna get the USB into your laptop. Yeah, size-wise, it's probably one of the better ones on the market because, again, for beginners, it's cheap, it's, the size is good, the quality is good, it's sort of like a metal chassis, like an aluminium chassis, and there's not much to connect into it, so you'll be able to cable management brilliantly so yeah i would really really recommend if you're a beginner into music or sound engineering or anything like that start off with the focus scarlet 2i2 and then progressively build up from there so with the 2i2 that i ended up purchasing it comes with free software by ableton this was ableton live Lite. you can purchase licenses to get the pro version online obviously at a cost don't get sort of daunted or bogged down by it when it first uploads and you think wow there's just so many buttons and different drop down menus it's all trial and error if you're starting up doing your singing and everything record something first then play about with it there is no pressure on you to put it out so there's that's what i would say really really play around with the settings and everything till you get the right levels for yourself but you don't have to stick with ableton live light you can if you own a mac you can go into garage band garage band is one of the easiest if not the easiest audio software out there everything's marked up and if in doubt go on youtube and just watch videos and people are teach you just as well we're recording then will it so you can pretty much use any headphones bar ones that you get with mobile phones purely for the fact that it needs a 3.5 millimeter jack to go into it so i've got bose quiet comfort headphones these are not headphones that you will normally find in music studios they will usually go down the AK, akg route if i can get your teeth in you don't have to go out and buy expensive headphones so long as you've got a 3.5 millimeter jack female to male you're good to go pretty much so you've got your equipment you've got your mic you've got your isolation shield you've got your cables you've got your mic stand you've got your scarlet 2i2 interface but you're obviously going to need the software to upload all your audio to so what i personally use like i said before is garageband i own a, an apple laptop so it was just a no-brainer i did say that i used ableton live uh, that's purely because it, it came with the Scarlett 2i2 and I didn't really have any idea about GarageBand at that point. Um, but the license on my Ableton Lite Live ended up running out. I lost all the passwords and all the uh, login details. So I had no choice but to use GarageBand. But personally, I find GarageBand, as a starting point, one of the best audio softwares out there. So if you are going to start from a fresh, completely new beginner, Go and use GarageBand because it is literally, it's like the easiest software out there. It tells you what to do, what goes where, how to do this. And again, if you do get stuck, there are plenty of YouTube channels out there that will teach you how to use this audio software. So don't feel daunted by it. So that was just a quick video of my music setup. Again, I use all this uh, setup as well when I do my videos. Like I said, I've got the microphone just above me. I've, I've got the connected to the mic stand that's just out of shot on the boom arm. So it works brilliantly. I'm getting decent audio because let's be fair, the audio on the can is not the greatest. But if you have any questions about any of the, the gear that I've mentioned, or if you are starting up, because let's I'm brand new to it as well. So I'm sort of learning on the job. So if you've got any questions, sling them over in the comments down below sling me a personal message either on twitter or i don't really use instagram anymore sorry we're all in the same boat we're all learning on the job and if you've got any tips that i've not shared in this video again leave them for people in the comments down below i'm sure they'll be much appreciated um and i'll probably use them as well if they're good enough if you've got any further questions about any of the equipment that i've mentioned today again leave a comment down below tweet me dm me on twitter or whatever and yeah 
I'm more than welcome to talk to you guys about how I set everything up and what sort of levels that I use on GarageBand. Is that another video that you'd like to see? Would you like to see uh, a screen recording of how I go from rec sort of finding out the music that I'm going to record from start to finish? If so, again, leave a comment down below. I'm more than willing to do another video around that. So if you enjoyed this video, give it a massive thumbs up, hit that notification bell, and we'll hopefully see you in the next one. Bye.